Hi everybody, welcome to Season 3, Episode 29 of the Hard Truth Inside the Football Industry Podcast. With me, Philip Heitz and Aaron McAnthony, Chairman and Co-Owner of Peterborough United. We're doing it in person. And it's been a little while, hasn't it? It is, and I, I know fans were like dying to, for us to do one when we gate-crashed the playoffs, and obviously you got into the playoffs. Mm-hmm. And, and again, that goes to show when, when people accuse us of only ever doing podcasts when we win, those were, you know, to do one after yeah. the Duck Barnsley game and after Wednesday home leg, you know, if that was true, we'd be all over that and right. like doing them. But podcast no. a day during. Yeah, that. yeah, but no, I, I, you know, I had a lot going on. Obviously, yeah. as you know, you, you're a busy man, but I, I just had shit loads to do in England, so I didn't have the mental capacity to be just sitting down and doing a podcast. And uh, but yeah, it's good to be back. It's good to do it in person together. Um, I think this episode should be called uh, Football is a Cruel Game mm-hmm. <laughs> <You> know, <laughs> we've done Henry's job for him already <laughs> yeah and Henry can can probably join us on I that know, you know, as a he's, fan. yeah he's, he's yeah. missed out as well so you know all of us involved in the podcast we've been stung in some way I guess um, during the last seven days yeah, yeah football eh you know so people always say would, would you give advice to anyone who wants to get involved in football and I always start with you know don't the second yeah. thing would be expect to lose loads of money and you never really set out and go emotionally it's going to tear your fucking guts out it's like it, it really is a yeah. game for sadomasochists I guess would be the right thing to say because you have to be a sadomasochist to want to own a club manage a club run a club players are different you know that's a great industry everyone dreams yeah. about it being a player and, and yes of course players get affected and hurt by it and everything else but a lot of them go on to bigger and better things yeah. and then they win it but as, a, as an owner, as somebody involved behind the scenes, it, it is it is just relentlessly cruel at the best of times. But at the same time, I guess you have to look at it this way. When you win something, when you have a promotion, when you have something good happen, all those emotions, there's, there's the opposite to say the masochism, yeah. it's the pleasure, it's, it's the pain and pleasure thing, yeah. I guess. That's why we do it, isn't it? And I've said to you this season, yeah. I've, I've never known a season with so much pain and a little bit of pleasure and there was a lot of pain a lot of torture mm-hmm. and it's almost like and I don't want headlines me having to go at the team I'm not having to go at the team but I, I did say previously I've never known a team that you describe it like a relationship where you love and hate someone mm-hmm. you fucking love them like you've never loved anyone but when it's bad you fucking hate their guts do you know what I mean yeah. and by the way that was that was long before what happened at Hillsborough the other yeah. night you know I, you, you'd see me we've talked all the season about the ups and the downs of the yeah, season yeah correct where I'm like, I love them I hate them yeah. I love you I hate you I'm just like you know and, and and again I don't want the headlines being Dara hates his team and whatever because deep down I don't I I since Thursday um, I've messaged like over the weekend a lot of the players again today you know the ones we'll obviously have a list coming out about who's yeah. for sale who's getting retained who's who's getting released uh, and I sent a message to you know Nathan Thompson sent me a lovely message on, on Saturday I was half drunk I've been drunk since Friday when I got home um, and just you know I, I have a lot of um, love from, from many of the people mm-hmm. you know because they've been with us for three four years it's a cycle isn't it you know and, and whatever else and you know people will be surprised at the list when it comes out thinking oh you know why so many people are on that list yeah and it's actually not a financial I'm, I'm tr- God's you know what's the what's the right way of saying it um God's honest truth it was a football cycle decision where sometimes you have players for three or four years it's time it's yeah. just time you know yeah. and, and it's time for them it's time for you you know and and, and you go a, a different way and a, and a club like ours with our model you actually don't usually keep players three or four years it's usually if you look at the statistical analysis it's two years yeah. You get two really good years out of a player, then you sell them, you know, hopefully they'll have won something while they're with you, and then they go on and they earn the big bucks. Yeah. Because we just don't pay the big bucks, yeah. you know, we, we never will and never have. And and that's just the way it works in football. So it's it's just a cycle situation if that's the right way to, to terminize it. So but the events I would allow I mean I felt for you obviously I watched the Bradford mm-hmm. game on Saturday. Was it Saturday? It's, yeah, Saturday. Saturday I was watching that in my kitchen, I was hung over to fuck. I was going, oh, for fuck's sake. Um, because I was hoping somebody would be at Wembley I could watch, because I'm not going to watch the Wembley games now. I, I, to be honest with I'm you, not either. I haven't watched any football since Peter, but Bar- yeah. the Bradford game. Yeah. And I only watched that because of you. Yeah. I didn't see the other game. I didn't even watch Liverpool over the weekend. I was just, yeah, I'm... I, you I, need to, it's, when you go through something mm, that's traumatic, I need two months you just need to forget that it exists. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's tough for me, because mm. now I have to, management-wise, you know, player-wise, contract-wise, I'm already, since... Friday, Saturday, um, you know, I've had to, 
obviously have a lot of conversations. I've been speaking to agents, speaking to players. Today I had a three hour call with the manager, you know, his staff, all those things. So I can't step out. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I'm, I'm like, I'm flying back. Obviously I wasn't due to fly home on Friday. I was meant to come home on, I think it was Monday, you know, hopefully it all went to plan. I'd be my daughter's graduation this week. Then I was flying back over mm -hmm. for one last finale type thing. If that happens, I'd never planned on that. But obviously when it happened, Afterwards, I spoke to the manager late that night, and they were still waiting. I think one of the players was, you know, drug tested and couldn't piss, yeah. and so they was made it even worse. They were stuck at the stadium till twelve o'clock, and I said to him, "Look, Gaff, I need to get home. You know, it's it's Friday tomorrow. It's a long weekend. None of us are going to meet up. You're not going to want to meet up. No one's going to want to meet up." Uh, and I don't want to sit in a house on my own for four days. I don't yeah. know what I'd do to myself, quite frankly, for yeah. four days. You know, I, I'd probably turn into a, a, an alcoholic and I hadn't drank for three and a half weeks. So I said, I'm, I'm going to book a flight. Uh, I've got to go see my family. i got to go home. I didn't even tell my wife. Mm -hmm. I just landed in Orlando on Friday and then I gave it a heads up. I was on my way home um, and I got home at like 4.35. My kids were nice and surprised and then I got drunk. I drank for five hours with my wife. So... I'm not gonna lie. I was like, you, you know, there was, there was tears, there was mm -hmm. laughter, there was. It was just what I needed. I just needed to be around yeah. my family, and and it's funny because my my closest family don't reach out after what happens. They know they reach out to my wife. Yeah. So my wife was like, no, I've had your dad on, I've had your sisters on, I've had you know whatever else checking. Are you okay? And I've told them all, you know, that you're on your way home, and you know from the airport, and I got a surprise, and don't worry, we have a couple of days. I was just nice because I'm around my kids. Mm -hmm. You know, it was really weird because after the results, even though I didn't want to ring home to America, I had to ring my daughter, my 14 year old. She was doing a thing called a TAP project, which mm -hmm. you do at the end of a school term for middle school. And she'd done this whole presentation she prepped for. And she was going in on Friday morning to give this presentation to two teachers. And I had to, well, not had to, but I wanted to ring her. Yeah. And mate, you got it, you cool, you know, I've just- Moral support. And I've just watched all that. I've done all the emotional roller coaster, but that was an important phone call mm -hmm. more than the what happened at Hillsborough. So, because you're still a parent, you're still a partner, you, yeah. you've got it. It puts it into context as it well. Does, it? it does, it does. My wife was amazed I made the call, but I had to make the call, yeah. you know, so to make sure my little girl was good going to school on the Friday and, you know, it didn't choke up uh, the presentation, you know, speaking of the words like choke and bottle jobs, that's all I've heard, you know, since Thursday night. Um, so yeah, it was, um, it's been a surreal 72 hours. So I got drunk on Friday, got drunk on Saturday, went to see Fast 10 yesterday with my mm -hmm. son and my, my daughter, just movie, you know, daft movie stuff for a few hours. And then back in the office today, just working and planning. And then I got back to England next, uh, I got graduation on Thursday and I got to England on Sunday, um, where I'll be there for a couple of weeks before heading away to Dubai. And then back to England for the rest of the summer. So, yeah, it's um, football's relentless. It doesn't give you a chance to breathe. You have to get on with it, you know, that kind of thing. But it's been a, I don't know where we start, but it's been a weird couple of weeks. Yeah, let's, let's go back to Barnsley. Okay. Because uh, Barnsley, I was fortunate to join you as well at the game. I didn't even um, recognize you. Yeah. I arrived at Barnsley <laughs> because I'm always in a bit of a trance. A I was surprised to even see you. I thought you'd just get Yeah, because I, I, I felt. It was really important. I said to the manager, look, I don't usually go to the away games and whatever else. I kind of like, you know, and I said, but I think it's important I'm there. Mm -hmm. We have very little chance, um, but I'll go. And I went to the game. Barnsley were really gracious, really nice people behind the scenes there. It was my first time at Barnsley. Um, watched the game. And of course, I had like Alex, our commercial director, sat behind me. So obviously, he's one of them who's like on his phone watching mm -hmm. for the other results. We obviously go 2 0 up. And I'm like, Alex wants to score in the other game. He's like 1-0 to Sheffield Wednesday. I'm like, I need to go for a walk. So I went for a walk mm -hmm. around Barnsley. There's a lot of Barnsley's in like uh, kind of a house. They wouldn't let you out early either, would they? No, but they were okay. In fairness, they opened a the gate for yeah. me. They let me go. I was like, look, I need to get some fresh air. And it was really hot. And I've got like a suit on. So I was like sweating like Gary Glitter at passport control. I was just like drenched in sweat. So I basically walked up the hill and then down on my, I put my earphones on and started playing a podcast. So I was listening to a podcast because I could still hear the stadium. Yeah. And I was looking, I could see the posh fans on the hill I was walking and they were pretty quiet. So I was like, shit, I've, I've, I've Derby scored. So I'm, I'm, I'm like that, I'm torn. And my, my OCD's kicking in. Mm -hmm. Then I knew in full time roughly is it's usually about like um, 4.56, 4.57 is when a game usually ends with injury time. So I, I, I turn around, I start walking back, I put my phone on, I can see our posh account go, it's finished 2-0, now we wait. I'm 
like for fuck's sake so I swift over to the Sheffield mm-hmm. Wednesday social media account and it's like five minutes into your time we're into the fourth minute and I'm swishing swishes <laughs> and then obviously we were in and I was like I was so happy for the players I was so I was actually more happy for the fans because then I b- bumped into loads of fans yeah. outside and we were talking before about Twitter is not really an honest reflection of real fans because you get a lot of people who actually don't go to games mm-hmm. or on Twitter a lot of them are the ones who just give you the shit and the hate and the whatever the real fans the one thing the two games Wednesday at home Barnsley away was I got to like meet loads of the fans on the streets like loads of them and they were just it was just it, it filled me with so much happiness and joy yeah. and, and and of course we're happy to make the playoffs then everyone's like not giving you a chance you're playing a team god bless them we finished with 97 points or 96, 96 points yeah. you know ridiculous really they should have been promoted um, and you're kind of like written off and that's okay because you play the, the, the underdog well knowing that anything can happen in the playoffs once you're in it's a free yep. shot and I guess the fans that take a free shot so then we go to the game at home and we're fantastic it was great atmosphere it's a sell out Sky are there you know jizzing in their pants over the big clubs and the big teams I mean that that one's got a no matter what happened afterwards you'll have goosebumps thinking about that night I'm sure yes because it was watching some of my younger players just show the world they can play Mm -hmm. at the very highest level if you watch that game and saw Ronnie Jack Taylor Efron uh, Paku um, Hector some of the comparison the performances from you know we had five players on the 23 it was everything we're all about and we should have won five or six now mm, that last you know, minute chance Kwame so. one on one God mm-hmm. bless him I would never blame Kwame he's 21 he's one of our exciting young talents I didn't see it at 2-0 as usual I went for a walk to the training ground Yeah. so I left our stadium I went up to the how training how much ground. of a walk is that then it's a couple of miles mm-hmm. and I'm wearing bloody Christian Louboutin yep. business shoes and so my feet were in fucking bits I'm walking back near full time and I see all these fans coming out and they were relatively quiet so I'm thinking oh fuck we've duffed this up so I go on and see when I see the score line part of me wants to get happy and part of me is already thinking fuck is that enough <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know I mean? it's almost like one nil or two nil would have been a better. Do you know what? A better score. One hundred percent, one hundred percent. Because now you're playing a wounded animal with nothing to lose. Yeah. So I get back to the stadium and God bless the owner of Sheffield Wednesdays in my office. I walk into my office, going in for a smoke, mm-hmm. and there's this guy I've never met in there, and he's with a lady. I think it was their chief executive. And Barry suddenly comes bawling and goes, "Oh, hope you don't mind. He needed to have a smoke or whatever else, and you know he didn't want to be outside with his fans." And I was like, "I can understand that. You've just lost four yeah. 0 And he was a lovely guy, a really really nice man, and they were very um, congratulatory, you know, about mm-hmm. the result in the game. And the gaffer comes up and he goes, "Fuck that fucking the one on one McQuarrie." I'm like, "What? What?" It's just just you know we could have been 5-0 I'm like are you kidding me we could have been 5 and Barry was like yeah we've missed like some yeah. chances so so then I'm like please no talk of Wembley I don't want to hear it I said to Liz people ring you for tickets people want to talk about allocations I have no interest in hearing the words mm-hmm. if anyone in my inner circle outer circle mentions Wembley playoff final they're gone I just don't want to, and, I, and, and I said to the gaff the players you've got to make sure you're on them yeah. like you know you give this lot a couple of days off sometimes it could be the worst thing you do keep them focused keep them drilled be on them and even going home that night and watching the highlights and watching everything you know uh, you just had that sick feeling because of everything this season and the, the highs the lows the disappointments the derby loss the derby mm-hmm. game against Cambridge you still know anything's possible no correct and I've had teams in the past where I'll be like no way that's going to yeah. happen no fucking way you know the idea of back in the day the Trinity and, and the players there never going to happen but and that's not a, a dig at the current team I just they're an honest bunch of lads but they have it in them mm-hmm. for that to happen do you know what I mean you're playing against a team that and got 19 points you, you're, you're playing a team 000. who should have won the league who was superb all yeah. season you're playing a team who were going to have it's 33,000 but it'll feel like 70 mm-hmm. um, tough place to go and you're playing a team which just with nothing to lose with so many good players and if they get on top of you, you know, will we go under? And that's always your fear and your worry. Yeah. And, you know, and, and to be fair, I thought on the night, our two best players were 20 years old, mm-hmm. were Ronnie and Ricky, when he came on in injury time. And again, and again, not a dig, experienced players, blah, 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 blah. It just wasn't to be, you know, you give a penalty away after 10 well, minutes, when it's that unforgivable. Pe- yeah, when that it's, penalty happened, you just thought, yeah. you're watching somebody else's story. Mm. 
you're just part of somebody else's story at that point and and people want me to be angry with the ref oh I don't want to get in trouble but I don't think a referee if you're picking refs for the playoffs we should have the very best mm -hmm. we should have referees I don't know where he came from uh, no, I, and I'll apologise if he is from the Premier League or whatever else but it's not about the time added on but it's like I'm just wondering if Peterborough were chasing the fourth goal would it have got three minutes past mm -hmm. injury time that's all I would ask the question you know would that whistle have blown already and, and I would say as a neutral they should have been down to ten men right the one that so. killed me the most was forget about the last ten seconds because that's on your players to clear the ball properly yeah. that's on your goal it shouldn't keeper. have got that far no we should have cleared it but, but the game shouldn't have got that far no it shouldn't it's, have got that far no we should have done our job whatever but I think the killer is an injury time we score Ricky's sensational Efren Mason Clark is in on goal their player it's 100% a red card yep. you've seen it I've seen yep. it VAR even the Sky commentators were already basically you know their balls were exploding with the fact that it was 4-4 and you know Sheffield Wednesday are potentially going to pull off a comeback and go to Wembley if you look at it it's a red card mm -hmm. we're already I think we're one up at that stage in injury time and um, there's no way then we lose and Ricky is frightening the life out of him so there's all the hindsight there's all the things there's whatever else then you go to the penalties and I feel for Dan because Dan Butler at Newport took all their penalties yeah. he was a penalty taker and it wasn't a bad penalty you know and I think he'd said to Barry yesterday he apologised about it and it was like you, you have nothing to apologise for any time a left back is taking a penalty mm -hmm. you know they have nothing to apologise yeah. for um, and unfortunately we just seemed to dive the other way every time it was a penalty or just be miles away from mm -hmm. it we never got near it so you knew the coin toss when they won the coin toss they to put down their end which I didn't even realise there was two coin tosses I didn't I either I thought it would be the other way around if you win the end you get to pick the other team get to pick yeah me too so there was all those things I guess someone asked a question yesterday what would you change about stuff in the playoffs away goals mm. <laughs> away goals yeah <laughs> because as bad as it was and people want to call it a chug job and a bottle job and I heard talk sports and you know they were giving it the has anyone seen you know Adrian Durham there you know oh, Jamie O'Hara and, and um, Jason Cundy actually enjoyed that show I think Jason Cundy's brilliant uh, and, and O'Hara had been on crying in his cornflakes the week before about um, Sheffield Wednesday should never have had to play Peterborough yeah he was making a point yeah. that we should have had to go through another playoff cycle to get to Sheffield like he, wa he wanted to change the like whole the National League he wanted to change the whole setup of the playoffs yeah. because the big club didn't you know get through with their 100 points you know what I mean National, but the beauty of what happened the other night shows how wrong he was mm -hmm. because it's brilliant the way it's set up our pyramid is just brilliant you know and, and then obviously they did a whole Chuckle Brothers situation after the game because everyone's calling you bottle jobs choke yeah. jobs everything and all I can say is I was proud of my fans they were brilliant um, they were in a very intimidating atmosphere I was proud of my manager and his staff because they were under extreme pressure most of that game and over two legs we drew 5-5 with undoubtedly one of the best teams league one has seen for a long, long time. And we scored an away goal. <laughs> and I thought our young players shine very bright in the first leg particularly. And I thought we were as a football cre club a credit to ourselves that our fans traveled well. They came to support the team. And then we gave pops to Sheffield Wednesday that, hey, you know what you what you did was magnificent you know I don't need to congratulate them or come out and say how wonderful they are I'm telling you they're one of yeah. the best teams in the league um, and I do you always hope the team that beats you wins the playoffs you know so and they have no business being in league one yeah so I, I want them in the championship because they you know a club that you, you saw with the fan base and it was one of them like, I'm gonna say this their fans fair play because maybe a lot of fans would have been like for fuck's sake we're not showing up for that game yeah. you know so they played their it was 13 men practically yeah. they played like their part in a big way you know so so yeah so there's no sour grapes from me there's no you know yeah the red card the time added on whatever else at the end of the day you get what you deserve in football a lot mm -hmm. of the time and we had 180 minutes to win and we couldn't do that and um, but we gave it our best shot and that would never have happened without Darren coming back and the job he did with Kieran with Tongi, with the staff, and a massive, massive mention has to go to Jonathan Chatfield, our, our physio, and the sports science team, who since they've come back, if you'd looked at all the injuries we had prior to Christmas, they kept us very yeah. fit, you know, at a, at a very, very important time. 
And I just think the staff were a real credit to themselves and to the club. And, you know, I think Grant McCann took exception to a mm -hmm. video I put up a couple of days ago. I can only go, well, I, yes, he's a club legend, a brilliant player, you know, everything else for us and whatever, but put that aside. Um, I was doing a video just because you know, I don't want people to think I'm missing an action. You know, I wanted to do a video just to say thank you to the fans. Thank you to everyone who got us to a certain stage where we were five seconds from going to Wembley. Um, and, and yes, I'd said something about, the, you know, the manager came in with the previous crew had only won one and nine. Yeah. And again, when you're doing a video off the cuff, you know, I could have turned around and said, oh, the previous, da -da 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 -da, yeah. didn't All do these well. things are broken. Yeah, um, yeah, correct. I, I didn't. It, I didn't mean it in that way, but he obviously popped up and took exception to it and whatever else. And, you, you, you know, with, with, with all due respect, I'm not demeaning a club legend. He was a brilliant player for us. Didn't work as a manager. Yeah. Fine, no problem, you know. Um, he, he's, he, I'm not for him and he's not for me. And, and neither is his number two for me ever, any day of the week. Um, all I can tell you was is that when Darren came in, I was worried about us finishing 17th mm -hmm. or 15th. Such was the how bad the football was, such as how bad the results were. We couldn't buy and away win most of the time. Well, you um, were setting up to draw rather than to right. win, weren't you? You've said that, not yeah. me. And again, not a slight. All I can say is that when I made the decision, it was with one eye on, can we have a go? Yeah. Can we do the impossible, get crash the playoffs? Because I've always felt we've had the players. And I just felt we weren't playing the way we should be for the players we had and it would be easy to go and recruit a new manager and then you're riding off the second half mm -hmm. of the season or you can bring someone in who you know is a phenomenal, I mean phenomenal manager at League One. Sky were laughing at the time, there were lots of people laughing. I always found that disingenuous, I found that disrespectful because with all due respect, Darren Ferguson is one of the best managers in League One level and people want to tar him with the brush that he's never done it in the championship. Darren Ferguson has managed teams with gates of less than if you take Preston and us, yeah. average attendance is of less than 14,000. Yep. Yeah. There are managers out there who've had five, six jobs managing clubs with 30, 40, 50,000 people. He's never had that opportunity. So to call him a failure when all he's ever managed is us and Preston in the championship yeah. is unfair. He's a superb manager, phenomenal manager. You saw that in the first leg. Doesn't matter what happened in the second leg. Look at what he did taking a bunch of how could I describe them? Disinterested players, maybe not no really confidence. Got, no really. confidence. Just got tanked by Wickham three yeah. 0 Not really going anywhere fast. The training ground wasn't a great place to be. Our academy wasn't. You know the results. Just it wasn't together. You know when you went down there, it wasn't together. He brought that together. So what does he do that's so special that that enables that? I I, I think. He has an identity he wants to play with. I think he has an offensive identity, which can go against you. Yeah. You, you know, you obviously what happened the other night, but it can go well for you when you see the first leg. He has a certain understanding of young players. He knows how to deal with those young players. He knows how to deal with experienced players and you know leadership groups. Mm -hmm. He knows how to deal with the staff at the training ground. He he will bring the academy and all those coaches together and treat them the same. You know, the, 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 there's, a, there's a certain way to do things. I just think he's very good at what he does. He's been in management 16, 17 years. He's won, I don't know, five promotions. He's mm -hmm. won a trophy. He's been in playoffs. He's been in finals. He's been in playoff semifinals. I mean, he scored a shitload of goals. I mean, I'm like his agent here. Mm -hmm. I mean, this, you know, where people take a go at him. I mean, with all due respect, if, if he showed up at Bradford tomorrow, would you be heartbroken? No. Correct. Like, so this, this disrespect that comes out about him, even from some of our, when I say our own fans, some of the people who were just like, yeah, time to move on, yeah, time to do this. Like, based on what? Well, it's like, you know, you go into a job and you're always thinking is the grass greener on the other side. That's basically what Correct. people are thinking. People are like, I want something new. Yeah. I want something shiny. Careful what you wish for. Like, sometimes what you need is right in front of you. Mm. And, you know, and, and when you lose that or whatever else, it's like, shit, I've made a mistake. So, I have so much respect for him. The other thing I like is is that he's local, um, you know. So there is this time put in. There's yeah. all those things, you know what I mean. And it's not. And also, I've got so much going on off the field that I needed a manager, and I needed a manager that I don't need to handhold. Sometimes with new managers and new yeah. people, there's a little bit. People won't understand this. When I say handhold, I don't mean picking a team. I don't mean interfering. You have to handhold them through lots of things. Yeah. Um, and someone who's running a club can can probably explain that a bit better. And well, understand. he knows, so he, he doesn't have to second guess 
yeah. the way that you would think about making decisions. Correct. Because Correct. he knows and he has the confidence probably not to even ask you about it. Correct. Whereas a new manager, they're in, not any, sure. work, in they're, any walk of life, they're always wondering what the boss thinks. Right, exactly. And I'm, I am not that guy. I know people try and paint me as that guy. I, I, I don't want to have to, you know, you're ringing me on a Thursday night and saying, what do you think of this? And should I do this? And should I do that? I want someone with a definitive plan. I want someone with a definitive style of play. I want somebody who knows our club inside out. What are we all about? So there's all those things. So, you know, we tried, we failed. That's the beauty about football. Mm. There is winning, there's losing, there's success, there's failure. There's no in between. Um, I said it in my video on Saturday or yesterday when I put it out that there would have been 15 other clubs in League One would have died to be in a position yep. to lose 4-0 at Hillsborough. Yep. Yeah, like would have loved to have been in that position. And their season finished early. They were some of them were on the beach weeks ago. Yeah, you think about all the the excitement and the stresses everything. and everything that everything. came over the last few weeks. Everything that the playoff system does it, bring. It, it, it's brilliant. Like for us to still be in with a chance, yeah. and we thought we blew it at Cambridge, and then we thought we blew it by losing to Ipswich, and then nil nil at home to Bristol Rovers, mm -hmm. and all that excitement. And we'd been written off. Cheltenham was the biggest write off. I'd written us off. Our fans had written us off. There were podcasts being done. Everyone was having a go. The only, and this is where again I go back to him being a brilliant manager. The only person who hadn't written us off was the gaffer. Mm -hmm. I said to him after challenge, Gaff, let's just play some of the young players. Yeah, because you get in that mindset. Let's yeah. see whether you know we've got yeah. ten games left or whatever it was. Let's let's see some of the young players in action. It's time. Like I'm I'm done with this lot. And I was out walking, and he said, Chairman, do me a favor. And I said, Yeah. He says, Don't lose belief. We're not there yet. I promise you, if the next three games don't go to plan, I'll do that because mm -hmm. you're right. You roll out the young players and see what they're made of. But we're not there yet. And he goes, I still think we have a chance. Let's just see how the next seven, eight days pan yeah. out. We have three games. And I was like, okay, he got me turned around. Because that's that. I was like, fuck it, chat them. Um, so that's where he's brilliant. Now, a less experienced manager or a newer manager might have been like him going, fuck it, we're going down a different route. We're yeah. writing the season off. We'd never have hit the playoffs. We'd never have given our fans that excitement. You know, he's just very good. And I won't have anyone badmouth him. Um, I won't have anybody say he's not a brilliant manager. He is, and he doesn't get enough credit for it. You know, even the build up in the playoffs mm -hmm. and everything else, he can get enough credit. Like, you know, all those managers in the playoffs, you had the Bolton manager, the Barnsley manager, the Sheffield Wednesday manager. You know, there was one manager with a lot of playoff promotions mm -hmm. on his CV, a couple of others had one each or whatever else. but. You, you, you know, you got to give him credit. You know what I mean? And, and he, he's brilliant. And, and I've said that from day one. So it was a brilliant few weeks. It was a very cruel ending. It's very difficult to pick yourself up, but that's my character. I can't lay down and die. Um, you know, that's football. That's why you're in it. So you either decide to be in it or not be in it. Mm -hmm. And the only way I can now do things is to look forward. But I, it, it did hammer home to me. It was really funny because. We've never chatted about the job next year, but Darren said to me, probably a week before the playoffs or whatever else, he said, you know, if I decided to stay, the only way I'd want to stay is if we change a lot of things in, and I'm like, oh, right, okay, what are we doing? Are we signing dad's army here? Mm -hmm. And he was like, no, you, you don't get me. He goes, he goes, I want to go really young. Yeah. And I'm like, you want to go really young? I was like, you sound like me 17 years ago. What do you mean? He goes, no, I want to go really young. Like we've got some fantastic young players at the club. I, I want to go young. I want to go young and quick. And I was like, okay. And I was like, talk, you know, talking about if you're here, or if you're not here, you know, maybe we're looking at those players. And he goes, no, I want to go young. And I, I'm like, really? But that's a really good. No, I want to go young. And I'm like, oh, okay. So that made me think. That's not a financial thing. Mm -hmm. That was just like. Our academy's thriving. We have a phenomenal end to the season there at the 18s, the yep. 16s, even the 21s did really well. And it's kind of like, eventually you have to back the, the process, not trust the process, not back the process, but you have to back the policy. Yep. That if that's the way you're going as a club, when do you make the decision? And yeah, this was kind you of exist for it to be a feeder, not right. just to get to a, right. a glass ceiling and then yep. they all go into non-league. Yeah, this timing was perfect, like with everything that happens. So we've got to reset things and we've got to come up with a different way of doing things and we've got to go younger and we've got to go more dynamic and we've got to be the dark horses mm -hmm. and I'm not allowed to shout from the rooftops about winning promotions and leagues so I have to change a little bit yeah. and I'm not too old to change I would always have an expectation for us to do well but maybe I have to be a little bit more um, uh, 
what would the right word be cute about how I do that and say that so without no greatest show on turfs next season well do you know what the first leg you would have I said know, that was right? the greatest show on turf mm. right <laughs> <laughs> and that's okay, you always like your goals <coughs> so you got them yeah, yeah, we, yeah we scored 90 odd goals we, we, we scored a lot of goals for the season I remember people saying last summer how are we going to replace Dembele and Schmodix's mm. goals how are we going to do this I think we scored more goals um, so we're always about goals what probably was fascinating was we didn't score in 14 games that was really mm. fucking bizarre but that was kind of like feast or famine we're a little bit like that yeah um, so yeah I'm, I'm, I've got to change some of my ways I have to be a little bit um, I don't know I'm just going to have to be better be a bit more patient I'm going to have to be a little bit and it'll be the same for on social media with fans with whatever sometimes yes I can be a little bit adversarial I can be a little bit aggressive I can be a little bit standoffish that people like have this image of me of being a prick of being this being that but you've never heard me you know through the playoffs through all the games going OTT I didn't I put one video of a guy sweating that was after Barnsley that was more to do with the heat than actually the game mm-hmm. so you know I wasn't bragging after the 4-0 win people were like I think some fans said you were dancing in the streets I wasn't I was walking back from the training ground and got swamped well if anyone knows you that's me. not your style yeah it, no it's not it, it, fate. I, I'm OCD like that yeah. so there was no celebrating all I kept saying to all the fans was calm down it's half time calm down people were lifting me and I was like calm down I don't want videos of this out because this will just antagonise the opposition so all I'll do now is wish Wednesday the best because like I said I met their owner I like him um, and their manager's a good one of the good guys so now we wish them the best mm-hmm. and their fans their fans are like unbelievable different gravy but our fans are different gravy what I've learned about our fans the last few weeks is like I, I could show you like if I go into here like Instagram whatever I have so many messages from fans brilliant like no abuse whatsoever just brilliant messages from fans old young new um, I'm doing a, a spaces as a called with yeah, a couple of the guys that, yeah, yeah they, they, I think they wanted me on a couple of days I was on an airplane on Friday when they did the spaces but uh, John and uh, I think Harry um, reached out to me we're doing one at the end of June mm-hmm. when I'm in Dubai so how I'm going to get my head around the tech on that shit but I'll, I'll try <laughs> as long as they uh, tell you which button to press yeah, you'll be good to yeah. go <laughs> you know there, there are people who I am angry with you know from a, 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 who are fans or so called fans are working in the media this year I felt you know given our club a rough ride yeah. um, which was very unfair with the stuff I'm dealing with and trying to deal with and I felt you know that's not fair you know even leading up to the Wednesday thing we had you know an ex-club captain who'd been captain of our club for three years yeah. rooting, even though he was in their academy rooting for the other club some of the stuff I saw I'm just like you're out of order like you're out of order like mm-hmm. like seriously like you're out of order um, but we had some great people we had you know Gabby was back Aaron was back Craig was back at the home game you know and they're real posh through and through and they wanted us to like win and progress other people you had our current one of our current goalkeepers Yes, you know, like, uh, yeah. I mean, obviously, single digit IQs. Uh, and there's a reason why he doesn't play for the club anymore. Yeah, but he's on my payroll. I know, and I ain't having that. Yeah, and you know, you you can't do that. Um, so that's gonna get dealt with, and um, you know, that's just like, what are you thinking? Right. Like, I don't care what your person, your relationships like, whatever else. What are you thinking? But he's still got a year left, hasn't he? Yeah. It? Yes. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. So you know, well, very very silly, very immature. Um, but like I said I can't help how some people just like say stupid things Mm -hmm. like pathetic really so that would be dealt with Um, you know there's lots to deal with Um, but we have to go again and you know it's never a dull moment Uh, I think I've owned the club 17 years and there's been I think you could call it roller coaster whatever you want to call it but it's very very rare our season ends with nothing on the line <laughs> it's fucking bonkers like fucking bonkers honestly it's bonkers like with promotions playoff losses fucking you know cup finals um, championship disappointments relegations it's fucking bonkers like absolutely bonkers but uh, three of the biggest disappointments in my life Crystal Palace away the vote during COVID season and Thursday night in mm-hmm. Hillsborough in in a short space period as an owner of a football club three of the cruelest things that ever happen and then you go the other way and, and the gaffer was telling me earlier it's a bit like being 3-0 down to Lincoln with 20 minutes to go yeah. and you do the impossible you know so it's just it's football right uh, I sometimes wonder you know the Premier League supporters who are supporting the, say, the teams that are in the 12th, 13th, 14th 15th yeah. yeah every year yeah. year in year out and you think yeah. 
the roller coaster of emotions you go through in the football league. By April and May, this, probably by March and April, you're at a stage where it's like fatigue of, oh, there's nothing really going yeah. on here. So I think about when we played in the Premier League, you know, we played, we had two years. And yep. It was 99 to 2001, something like that. So, yeah. But you always dream of being in the Premier League. Yeah. And the first year was amazing because it was all experiences of different places. And you yeah. know, all, all the stadiums that you're suddenly playing on a level playing field. Yeah. And then the second year, which is we got relegated. And you just hate every week. Like, I just want to play somewhere I think it's going to be competitive. Yeah. 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 Our, our pyramid is the best in the world. Mm -hmm. Like, everything about our pyramid, even Guardiola was talking about the yeah. game. I couldn't get away from this game, you know. Like, every time I turned on the TV, it was just, Jesus Christ. It was... Yeah, it was not. It's not thing. It's been an advert for the EFL. Yeah, brilliant. You know, and we played a part in that, regardless. Yeah. You know, good or bad. You know, people want to talk about us choking and bottle jobs. Well, I'm sure even the Wednesday fans would say this. What would you call them losing four nil at our place? Mm -hmm. What would that be called? Yeah. So you, you, you know, and, and again, I don't want any Wednesday reporters trying to take my words and make me be the bad guy. I'm not. I'm. I'm I've been complimentary about them. They deserve to go through. There's no no disputing that for me. And, and anyway, they deserve for the season they had yeah. to have won promotion. But unfortunately, you had two trains in Plymouth and Ipswich that just mm. weren't stopping. I mean, it's incredible how many points the top. Oh, the League top One of the got. season has been. It won't be like it next year, yeah. in my opinion. But League One has just been top draw, like top draw. I mean, you look at the clubs around us. You know, Bolton. Mm -hmm. You know, you know, even Barnsley to a certain extent. You, you know, how many points did you get in the end? 77? 77 77 yeah which is usually good for middle of the playoffs it's yeah, not yeah, yeah, sneaking yeah. in on the last day of the season 100% I mean it just shows you what a great job Darren did because you know three three more wins and we would have matched I think when we go up automatically mm -hmm. so we weren't that you know far away when you think of the results in, in his run of results you know like there were games we didn't score at home you, yeah. you, you try to us points in but I, I wouldn't change anything and the playoffs are the best way to get promoted of course you want to go up automatically but the playoffs really are what it's all about mm -hmm. Barry always said that if you can guarantee going up that way yeah, you, you want take to go that, that way yeah. so you know Carlisle are going to have that now playing obviously Stockport yeah. you know you're going to have Wednesday and Barnsley um, it's, and, and then obviously Coventry, Luke. Coventry right? Jesus I mean so mm -hmm. those games are going to be like knockout games like they're going to be great um, but we played our part this year and it was a lot of excitement and yes people want to laugh at us about the other night and whatever else but I don't find any of it funny I just find a lot of I'm proud mm -hmm. and, and saying that after people say your bottle jobs and choke jobs and whatever else no I'm really proud of my fans I'm really proud of my team I'm proud of my manager and his staff you know we we, did, we we put ourselves in a position that no one would have thought was possible a couple of months ago yeah. so that's all I have to say on that and now we we, we, we turn the page yeah. and we start planning for what's next the greatest show on turf nope not going to say it the next vengeance not going to say that either what I'm going to say is our aim is very simple, is to make our fans proud, mm -hmm. put bums on seats, smiles on faces, and play a brand of football with young players that'll be the envy of a lot of clubs. And there's a lot of clubs probably envy what they saw the other night, yeah. you know, in the first leg, and be the envy of a lot of clubs for what we do. And that is what we're gonna do. Uh, well, we got a lot of questions that came in um, along the way. So I printed off many from Twitter. I put a request sure. out last night. Sure. Um, let me see. So, and some of them you have already answered okay. so far. Um, one from, let's see, from Mark. Given the roller coaster of the last couple of years, and Dara's assertion that we'll be focusing on promoting the youth, what can we expect in terms of incomings? And can we expect any major signings given the current financial situation of the club? Yeah, I, I mean, look, the financial situation of the club, I'm working on all of that. So I have lots of goals. You know, it's, there's no um, secret that you know there's there's ownership issues and, and whatever that are getting worked out there's debt issues that every club has and yes we have the same it doesn't mean we're desperate to sell it doesn't mean we have to drop our drawers i'm working all of that i've been doing it the last four weeks i'm trying to put us in a place where we can still invest in the squad we can actually spend some money on our training around which mm -hmm. i really want to do and some of the pitches and some of the things we need to do and i'm trying to resolve the stadium situation as well because there's, there's little projects at the stadium we are doing the bar and whatever but there's other little projects around the stadium myself jason have spoke about that i can't speak for jason and randy um but i can just say that i'm trying to resolve all those issues yeah. one way or another i have a list of things i even have a document in there i've drawn up uh, pufc the next three years i'm just doing some short-term planning of, of a wish list of things i mm -hmm. want to happen so will we be buying players this summer hell yeah but they won't be over the age of 25. Yeah. <laughs> but we always buy players. 
And people was going, eh, financial and this, this, this. I turned down bids in January because the gaffer said he'd leave if I sold any of the players. Mm -hmm. Because by the end of January, he got a sniff that we could gate crash the playoffs, yeah. even though we were a long way out. And he was like, can't sell uh, these players. You know, not in the summer. And I was like, gaff, for fuck's sake, I'm trying to, the fans want me to reduce debt. I'm trying, can't do it. He didn't say I'd leave, but he was kind yeah. of like very angry. So yeah. I was like, you know what? And I turned down bids. I turned down bids for like three players, serious bids. So they're going to come again in the summer. You know, Jack Taylor, the last three months, has mm -hmm. been from, since the bids that came in in January for him, he has been different fucking level. He is unbelievable. As a central midfielder who actually, the gaffer moved him up a bit. Yeah. You know, whatever, goals. Listen, our players like him and Ronnie, of course bids are going to come. Yeah. Very unlikely they're going to be with us. Yeah. That's the cycle. Um, but I'm going to reduce debt. I am going to have to do a retooling on the squad. It's going to be young players. Yes, we're going to pay for those some of those players. Um, and then we're going to spend some money in the training ground and we're going to just improve a lot of things. So, yeah. Um, and this question has come in from a lot of folks. It's around Darren's future. Sure. So, where are you in terms of what the management team looks like going forward? So, we had a conversation today and those conversations are going to continue. Um, nothing's cast in stone. Today's Monday. I don't mm. want a podcast. Yeah, we're going to yeah, go Wednesday probably. Right. So, um, it was a really good productive conversation. We spent two and a half hours going through the squad going through his ideas, going through my ideas, um, everything's on the table. Mm -hmm. So I, I can't turn around and say, he's gonna be manager of the football club or he's going somewhere else. There was always that. Yeah. The last couple of weeks thinking other clubs might nick in there and, yeah. and try and hire him, which is quite normal for what he's doing. So those conversations right now are just, are just happening. Because even though we talked about players and stuff a couple of weeks ago, there was no conversation around, are you staying, do you wanna stay? No one wanted to get distracted mm -hmm. from the job in hand. And just when I thought we were getting to the stage where the season's going to end now, now we can have those discussions. Fuck me, we've got another week. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, then you're like, you're going to get battered by Sheffield Wednesday in the semi finals. Fuck me, we just won 4 0. This could go even longer. You know, so it's, it's, it's just the way to get I mean, it. I think that speaks to his professionalism <laughs> around 100%. And, and the football club that 100%. whether he's here or not, he wants to. If he's not here, he wants to leave the foundations for the next person to be successful. We, we, we had a, he knows who the club, and he agreed with, because he helped me do it, who's staying and who's going. Mm -hmm. You know, because I, I trust his opinion, I trust his staff. So we devised that list together. No matter if it's a new manager or not, it makes sense who we're putting on the list, who we're moving on, who we're retaining. And then obviously we have an idea of what we need to bring in over yeah. the summer. Those signings won't arrive in June. They won't arrive in the four weeks of June. We're gonna take our time. Uh, you know, preseason starts the 24th of June. We got to camp on the 9th at St. George's Park, mm -hmm. you know, where we went a couple of years ago and we got promoted. We were lucky that that became available, so we dived in there. We're playing like some really good preseason games. Our younger players, we stepped up, maybe some of them stepped up from the academy, from the 21s. Um, but we will be signing uh, a few players, you know, the, the things are gonna happen. But he, Darren himself spoke to the players who were, who were gonna leave, and yeah. who were out of contract, who might get offered new contracts, who were gonna go on the list, because they trust him, they know him. Yeah. So it was only right that he had that conversation with them, and he handled that right as he would do. Do you have a preferred timeline on making a decision? Yeah, in the next five days. Yeah. I, if not, I'm in England next weekend. Anyway. Yeah. So, you know, it, it's, I, I pretty much want it done now as quick as possible, because we've got so much going on. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? I've got stuff off the pitch I've got yeah. to resolve. All right, we've got a question from Eamon. He yeah. said, um, it's fair to say the posh, in his opinion, the posh goalkeeping situation has been a bit of an issue this yeah. year. Uh, what's your take and is a permanent signing the best way forward next season? Yeah, I, I we really like at the club, Will Blackmore. Mm -hmm. We have a lot of confidence in him. We think he's one of the best young goalies for distribution. Um, he got a taste of it this season. He played a couple of games. He had a clean sheet, I think, in one of the games. And then we played Wickham in another. And there's no true fault of his own that he didn't get more opportunities. Um, we've spoken already. The coaching staff that are here at the moment think that he should get a fair crack at it in the summer. Yeah, he's a young goalie with so much ability. He had early problems, you know, with being immature and silly things, and he's grown up this year. And he's going to get a fair chance this summer mm -hmm. to compete. We will sign another goalkeeper. Yeah. That might not come till the middle of July, but he will compete, and we'll probably, hopefully, sign someone permanently. And he will compete with them for the gloves yeah. because he's 21 now or whatever else. He's been around the first team. He was back up in the promotion season. He was, you know, around the 21s last year in the yeah. champ. He got a breakthrough this season. We brought in two young goalies, which is probably unfair to him having two come in. Um, so I, I don't disagree with what, uh, was that Eamon who Eamon, said that? Yeah. That, you know, we, we need a little bit of now. There's been seven goalies over three years or whatever else. We, we need to look at that department and yeah. change that. And it, it would be great if our own young goalie suddenly just grasped that opportunity and became the one. 
Yeah, and so I mean, young lone goalkeepers can work and can have can be like I keep a Bolton. Saying it. Well, it's not just Bolton. You look in the um, in, in the uh, Plymouth yep. best ones in the league. I yep. mean, you, you go through it. There's some great young goalies in the top seven. I've said this for the last two years, but again, I, you know, do you get down the loan route again? Yep. So. You know, we need to resolve that. Yeah. I think, you know, without speaking out of turn here, I think he will get an opportunity to get that number one yeah. spot. And then how he takes that That's probably, up to him. probably determines what kind of keeper you look to bring in late summer. He's got to come in in the shape of his life in the summer. Yeah. He's got to basically be a leader. He's got to be a talker. He has got all the tools. People would say he probably need more height. But anyone who's seen him play the saves he makes, his agility, mm -hmm. his reflexes, his distribution is just best I've seen. The coaches tell me the same. He has got unbelievable chance but it's on him right. because he could come back pre-season arrogant he could yep. come back like oh, this is a, he could come back with a beer belly I'm not saying Will would do that yeah. but sometimes footballers have that thing in their head so it's in his hands so to speak let's see if he runs with it so question from Clifford um, does the bu budget depend on player sales every budget depends on player not player sales player um uh, trading. Mm -hmm. It's the same for every football club. I'm sure you asked Ryan at Bradford and Mark Hughes. Yeah. Sparky, what's your wish list? You know, this summer. Well, yeah. we're losing Andy Cook. Mm. Potentially, don't get to keep him, so we're going to need a striker. I'm yeah. going to need this. I'm going to need that. How are you going to fund that? Ryan will turn around and say, "Well, we're going to maybe have to sell the old player here, mm -hmm. there, whatever." Every football club that's not called Sheffield Wednesday, you know, or Ipswich, yeah. who have 28, 30,000 fans, or everyone. whatever else. They need to player trade. Yeah. So with all due respect, we're no different. You know, our, our attendances rose this year. We had one of our best averages for a long time in League One. Our commercials flying. There's lots of good things happening at the club. But equally, we're, we're, we're always a club reliant on player trading and yeah. a club reliant on ownership contributions. Yeah. And I don't really want more debt added. I don't really want more contributions from owners or whatever else because, again, you're adding more debt. Yeah. I would rather the club actually reduce debt and still build mm -hmm. and retool with player trading. Now we have players who are gonna go, who aren't gonna go for the many millions at some will, that are gonna go for a few hundred grand or 400 grand yeah. or 500 grand. And there are players like that going on the list. Um, not the big high value assets for sale yeah. that might, that, that'll be not on the list. So we have to trade around that and we have to be clever. So I, you know, I know as a club what we wanna recruit, mm -hmm. the areas we're gonna to need to recruit in. But again, we have to be sensible. So. Money is not dictating, you know, like we need to sell tomorrow. Yeah, fire sale and we're going to just Fuck no. go and. Fuck no. Listen, something. clubs who want to buy our players might want to put that shit out there, mm -hmm. but fuck no. <laughs> Which they do, you know? Yeah, they do, and they, they did. Mm -hmm. So, ain't happening. As somebody found out and made bids before, when I got told, like, you know, don't believe everything you read. <laughs> so, a question from Paul When it comes to the sale of a top player, is it sometimes a case that you're telling a player that they're leaving even if they want to stay? Nobody wants to stay at Peterborough that's getting offered 15, 20 yeah. grand a week with all. I know what Paul's saying. Has there ever been a time where a player's gone, oh, I don't want to leave or whatever else? No. In all my yeah. time. Maybe like 20 years ago when there were this. The ones I was selling for millions yeah. are always getting offered four or five times more money. Yeah. And players have a short career. And I can yeah. never, ever stop a player going on to make life changing money as long as we can do a good deal for the club. Yeah. So. The answer to that would be no. There's no real person going, hey, I'm staying at Posh. I want to stay here forever. Da, 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 da. So, yeah, that's the way it is. What's your opinion on the teams that have gone up and how do you feel they will do in the championship, especially Ipswich? I think Ipswich should be a force, like a proper force to be reckoned with. Um, good ownership, good structure, uh, good manager. I think they've got a bit of business to do, definitely, for sure. Um, but they've they've... Everything's in place for them to be a very, very top tier. If Sunderland can make the playoffs, um, if, if Luton and Coventry can be in a playoff final, mm -hmm. unbelievable. Those three clubs I've just mentioned. I tipped Sunderland, yeah. didn't I, by yep. the start of the season. I think Ipswich could be a top two challenger. Yeah. Um, will it be year one? I don't know. If they recruit well, I think it could be. Um, so they're set to go. You know, I always speak mm. about big clubs rebuilding yeah. and coming back and going strong. So, yeah, um, Plymouth, not a small club. I think they're getting mm. fifteen thousand on average. Um, good ownership, um, great, great manager. Uh, the job he's done this year, I can't call that one. I don't think they'll struggle. I don't think they'll be in a relegation fight. Um, a lot of players out of contract. 
That might be a good thing for them to have a rebuild. Mm -hmm. Our mistake was we probably gave out too many contracts and had too many of the same. Yeah. When we should have been more harsh. Because you wanted to reward those. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, yeah. And sometimes you make mistakes. So I think it might work for Plymouth actually having to rejig the squad a bit because they've already got good coaches, good manager. Um, be interesting. Wednesday. That's an interesting one because I think the age of some of their players. Mm -hmm. I think they would have to, the ownership would have to give Darren um, a proper budget, you know, yeah. to buy and acquire players because they're going to have to reduce the age. I think I might be, if I'm wrong, I apologise, but I think it's a lot of older players in that squad. And how about if Barnsley? Um, Barnsley are bar similar to us in the way that, and they'll laugh at me saying that because they obviously hit the playoffs in the championship a couple of years ago, but. They recruit similar to us. They have a similar model and style and whatever else. Good manager. Mm -hmm. Very good manager. Um, I think he doesn't get enough credit for at the end of August, they'd sold a lot of their good players and they recruited late in the window. Yeah. He didn't have the biggest squad. And it wasn't the best start. Uh, no, of that, was and it? what a fucking run they yeah. went on. And I, and I think, Duff, he doesn't get a lot of credit for that. They're not going to be a pushover in the final. Um, you know, and that was a tough place to go and win. They played their strongest side, and we went there to try and squeeze into the playoffs. Mm. I was surprised at that, but um, so yeah, interesting. I think the clubs coming up from League Two. Um, who we got? We got Northampton. Yeah, we've obviously got um, Lake Orient. You got Steve Stevie Evans. Uh, I smashed my office up after the nil nil with Bristol Rovers because I thought we'd blown our chance. Mm -hmm. And as I was walking around with glass all over my feet, I looked up <laughs> and saw Stephen is promoted, and I stopped what I was doing. And I audio message to Gaffer. Mm -hmm. and I said, Gaffer, what a fucking job you've done. You should be manager of the year in League Two. Yeah. Fair fucking play. And to be fair, he texts me all the time. He texts me. He went with his family to the Hillsborough game. Mm -hmm. He was there behind the goal. And he messaged me afterwards. And he messaged me yesterday checking how I am. You know, that's that's proper, you know, the way it should be. Yep. And, you, you, you know, and, and I have a lot of respect for him. And what a job he's done. So... And then obviously, yeah, who else? Did I miss anyone coming up? No, so then it's going to be between Stockport and uh, Carlisle. Yeah, Carlisle. I mean, what a job their manager's done. Yeah. Jesus. But in fairness to Stockport, you've gone from non-league, you've come back up, you've beat Wrexham there. Um, what a job they've done. Yeah. I mean, my God, Sky are going to have a come fest next year with Wrexham and Salford. Mm -hmm. I mean... Y y y I'm not looking forward to that circus. Would, would I bet 20 grand that the first live game in League 2 will be Wrexham on TV? Yeah. Anyone want to take that bet? <laughs> it's Friday <laughs> night before the start. Of the, in fact, even now, <laughs> the Championship and League 1 aren't going to matter yeah. anymore. Yeah, no. absolutely. But in saying that and, and whatever else, that wasn't a dig at, at Wrexham because, you know, it's not your fault if everyone sees you as their no. favourite, you know, new love-in like they did with Salford and whatever else. But um, special mention has to go to Notts County. Mm -hmm. I watched, you know, that final. And, you I know... Mean, they nearly snatched defeat from the jaws. Yeah, of but you know what? Times, they? they never know when they're dead. Yeah, I think they scored late in injury time in the semi-final. Yeah, the they game. did it again in the final. You talk about mentalities and, mm. you know, you talk about choke jobs, bottle jobs, whatever else. You know, what those staff at Notts County have done for those players has just been remarkable. To push Wrexham. Let's not kid ourselves about Wrexham. Wrexham's, Wrexham's now a big football club. Yeah. Right? They're getting big gates. They're getting big fans. The players are getting three right? to four times the wages of anybody else. Those owners, very cleverly, using everything they've done, have now pretty much got that club paying its, wiping its face because yeah. of the TV deals, sponsorship deals. You can hate them, you can load them for paying all the money, but they can do it because they're running a brilliant business. Mm -hmm. They've taken a sleeping giant in an area with a lot of fans, yeah. they've given it love, they've invested, and now they're getting the payback. So my credit would go to everyone involved with Wrexham, you know, they're on the rise, yep. and they're inevitable. And there's no doubt in my mind that no matter how much you want to hate them all or whatever else, Wrexham would be in the championship mm -hmm. in three years' time. I would bet my left bollocks right now, and it's a big one, that Wrexham will win the league by 15 points next year. Yep. That, that'll that be over by March. They'll be up by March. Uh, but don't discount Notts County doing the same. Um, so it's interesting times. You know, A lot of big clubs are starting to come back from the dead mm -hmm. and, and, and getting their way back into the league. Um, the championship final intrigues me. You know, um, the job Luton, have, I, I love Luton, Mick Harford, I've always said this, big fan, you know, everyone laughed about them having to spend 10 million, so what, on the ground, mm -hmm. so what, I'm sure they're going to love having to sign that check. It means yeah, that's got, not a bad decision. Yeah, have, I, I, I think brilliant, you know, like brilliant, so what, you know, seeing Liverpool and clubs like that travelling there, yeah. brilliant, like, you know, Coventry, what a dream start for the new owner, um, mm -hmm. you know, Mark Robbins, 
and talk about another team that's been through. What did know, I the, say? The, what did I say when they were in a relegation and yeah. play games? Was I not the one who said they will not be down yeah. there? I said it at the time. You just know. And you know what those teams are built on? Funny enough, it's probably where I've never invested enough time or money. Those teams in the championship, your Lutons and Coventry's clean sheets, mm-hmm. strong at the back, defensively sound. And because of my propensity for score loads of goals, entertainment. flair, entertainment, it's probably hurt the club. Yeah. You know, instead of saying fuck strikers and fuck midfielders, we need like some giant centre half so you can fucking do the business at the back when we're in the championship, you know. So, you know, those clubs are built on hard work, grit and clean sheets. Luton love a clean sheet. Coventry, look what it did to Middlesbrough. Mm-hmm. Who would have thought Middlesbrough wouldn't score against them in the playoffs? So, you know, phenomenal job. You almost want both of them to go up. Um, really, really interesting. So, look, a- any other questions there to cover, like our you know standout questions? I don't ignore people either. I'm not hiding from any questions. Yeah, let's go through. Um, question from Lee: Is it cheaper staying in League One, factoring in police wages, agent fees, etc., than the Championship? No, because look, I- I'm not going to lie. We'd have had a million pound bonus bill straight away. We'd have had a lot of players go up to a lot of money. We would have had a Herculean task trying to you know, uh, rebuild in the mm-hmm. championship or retool. But we still have all would have taken it in a heartbeat. <laughs> you yeah. know, like Again, good, pr- like, good problem like, to have. Yeah, good problem to have. Yeah. So all of that that fallacy about, oh, you're better off not going up because you're going to come back down again. load of bullshit. Like we often, our previous owners talked about, well, we can't afford, we've taken the club as far as we can bullshit. go, we can't afford to get bullshit. the championship. Bullshit. You think Luton and Coventry think we're going to the Premier yeah. League, we're only staying there a year. Bullshit. You want to give it your best chance. And if you don't, you can rebuild your club. Mm. Champ's not as big as the Prem, but I'd rather be in the Champ trying to do our stuff than being in League One. Yeah. Anyone who tells you any differently, they're fucking liars. Uh, let's see, a couple of questions from Steve. Um, is there any clarity that you can provide on what's going on with the ground, with ownership? Working on it right now, even during this podcast. Yeah. Dealing with stuff. So as soon as I can speak about it, as soon as I can give clarity on it, I will, I promise. But just know that I'm working my bollocks off trying to resolve all these issues. I think they're resolvable. Mm-hmm. Um, it depends on many factors. Yeah. Depends on other people, of course. But I think there's there's movement. I think we can get there. Um, God willing. Mm-hmm. Um, again, I've always said my only agenda is good things for the football club and to do my best for it. And I think other people's agendas are the same now and, and, and common sense will prevail. Can you give like is there any perspective on the new ground is that dead in the water it's not dead in the water absolutely not I I joked the other day a couple of people who were there you know from the council both sides by the way I'm not picking sides you know who are Peterborough fans and I just said my god you see nights like tonight with Sheffield Wednesday and we probably could have had 20,000 people in the ground yeah just think of the revenue for the city tonight just think of what we could do just think of how magnificent it would be to have this all singing and dancing all purpose sports facility that will be open 300 plus days a year bring in so much industry and revenue and income into the city never mind you know who owns it or what you know just think of it you're talking about millions like you want to put a city on the map has to happen yeah. uh you know what i want it to happen everyone wants it to happen and we have to do our part and i think the more nights like the other night mm-hmm. the more the crowd grows the crowd base grows the, the, it will happen so it's not completely dead now. Okay. Uh, let's see. Uh, question from Joseph. How does being in the playoffs impact recruitment from a timing perspective and not really knowing which division you're going to be in? Do you know what? We're having chats right now with players. You know, there'll be chats next week. People, a lot of people have gone on holiday. Straight after the season finished, agents, players head off on holiday. A lot of the recruitment won't start till June. I think the window doesn't open until the 14th. So it's not going to impact recruitment at all. As much as being late in May, finishing... Mm-hmm. We know when our players are reporting back. We know when pre-season camp starts. You know, recruitment will all come together. And if anything, Barnsley are a great sign of somebody who recruited very late last summer and it didn't affect them. Yeah. They're, they're 90 minutes away from promotion. So there's a few questions about Bradford as well. Okay, um, yeah, great, because I feel like we've ignored Bradford. Yeah, so, so talk me through it. Stephen, what does Phil think we need to get back into, uh, well, Division 2-3? Where so did it go wrong in the playoffs, Phil? We, whenever we have to, dis- this is for the whole season, Whenever we had a decision of, in my opinion, of whether to attack or defend, we always tried to protect what we had. We went negative. Um, and so every single pivotal moment in every single game that I can think of, we went the defensive rather than going for it. Is that the manager? And you know, I think about what Mark Hughes has brought. Mark has brought soul back to the club, and for his legacy so far is 
the crowds getting bigger, that feeling as if we're all in it together mm -hmm. and all those things. You know, on the field, I look at, with frustration, at people like Richie Wellens and Steve Evans getting promoted because those are managers that have been around, they've been around the leagues for a long time, yeah. managers that would come and join us. Um, you know, I know they would come and join us at the drop of a hat yeah. um, and they continue to succeed and we continue to be stuck in you know, the purgatory of League Two. So I guess you go at the start of the season and get offered Carlisle in a playoff semi final to get to the final. You still take I mean, you think we should we be the top three, we should be going for top three, but you still well, take it. Does that but I think that um, we got what we deserved. Has he always been that kind of manager? I don't know. The to way be you've just described it. I don't know. Have you ever heard anything from Southampton fans or you know Not really. Is he is he that it's always funny, isn't he? He's next striker. Right, so you think it's the other way around, right? Right, but it never quite works like that in football. I mean, it's all possession based. Yeah, um, and is it for a coat on acres? <sighs> it's just really frust it's frustrating because you feel like we have the team, we have the players. That mm -hmm. there's the players were greater than the sum of the parts. This You're season. waiting for something to happen. Is that yeah. what it is? And like, like every week, we'd say, you know, someone's going to get beaten, like a real beaten yeah. from yeah, us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It never came. You never battered anyone. Yeah. It just never. You came. never got battered, but you never battered it. Right, and um, so you look and think, actually, it's a surprise we got to the playoffs. But then okay. is that because he can manage to? It's all about the end goal. Yeah. You know, and we're talking fine margins again. You know, we could be talking if it wasn't five minutes before our extra time yeah. in the second leg, the story could have been different. Yeah. And you know, he did what he needed to do to succeed when what you fall. Was, the what was he like in his post-match interview after? Um. So I only listened to snippets of it because I was like, I'm Angry. done with this as soon as it finished. Um, you know, it was about, you know, we come again. We, um, we know what we need to improve on. We know where some of the gaps were. Uh, full credit to Carlisle, you know, okay. all that kind of stuff. But um, still has the hunger. And, um, you know, next year we go on better. I guess when you see a team like Stevens go up. Yeah. It hurts. It hurts. Yeah, you know, and um, Stockport who've come yep. from non-league, you know what I mean. Kind of I thing. mean, I can understand that in some way because they have the momentum. We yeah, they have money, about. and they have an owner who invests. Money. Yep, yep, yep. I was just watching the game. I watched actually both legs. Yeah, and I thought, because you told me like your style of football was a certain way. Yeah, and I watched the first leg, and I didn't really see that. I thought you were very direct, mm -hmm. um, which because you'd kind yeah. of told me it was possession based, yeah. it was whatever, and I was kind of like, oh. This isn't but we set off that way, mm. and then we then was when we got the goal, we then and then I thought when you got the goal, back. it'd be like okay, you know now you've got them, you know yep. because I think I think Carlisle dropped the league in goal score and played some old dude up yeah. front like in the first leg. I was kind of shocked. Yeah, Ghana like, that they got from uh, Preston. Yeah, was, over Dennis, who yeah. obviously hadn't had a great ten games, but he yeah. was still twenty odd goals. Yeah. If I see that, I'm always like, what the fuck's the manager thinking? And Edmondson, who's you know, I think I, I think he's I can't believe how young he still is because he seems like he's been around been around forever. forever. But I was watching a game and, and I was like, jeez. And then obviously I watched the, the, the second game and I was like, this is this is there, you know, to, mm -hmm. to be had, you know what I mean? But again, I'm watching and go, mm, you, you, you know. So you go again next year with them. Yeah. What do you do differently? Um, if you're the owner of Bradford, what are you yeah. saying to Mark Hughes? What would I be saying to Mark? What do you think I'd be saying to Mark Hughes? I th well, I know what you'd be saying to Mark Hughes. You'd be going for attacking, you know, football. Well, I have Mark Hughes. Yeah, you'd be going out for, uh, <laughs> you know, get some more wingers out there mm. and get some pace out there and, you know, don't be so afraid. Yeah. Which yeah. I think that... Um, I saw one of the, your fans that asked me a question where we could sell you Adji boy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, there's just no direct... Like, that's, a, you know, when I went to Barnsley and seeing Poku on one side... Mm -hmm. Um, Efron, and Mason, Clark, on the yeah. other side yeah. and every time they get the ball it just mm -hmm. scares the living daylight out of the defence yeah. and we were, this is why I I never thought it was in question that you would win at Barnsley sure. as an outsider because I just felt it seemed destined that you were going to make that last spot Fair fucking um, <laughs> because you there's always something there's always a potential to score yeah. and that's what I didn't really get from us at all this year was right. that creativity was yeah. missing no, you've always been frustrated by that. Mm -hmm. You're like, we've held possession, we've retained possession, we've done this, we've done that. But the, what would it be, the, the lethal side of it? Right. The other There's side, just you nothing, know, just no like end product. You yeah. know, like, and, and I've actually criticised our team a little bit this year for not being ruthless enough, where we've been 3 nil up in games, 4 nil up, and like, took the foot off the gas. Yeah. A bit like maybe Wednesday at home. 
4-0 mm -hmm. now put it to bed yeah you know there was 20 minutes left in the game you know like and, and you think where would we be without Andy Cook and all of his goals yeah and everyone asked yeah. that about us with Jono yeah everyone asked that last year and we Sammy and whatever and I always go you can't think like that yeah you know teams are like yeah what would the word be? You, you just new players come in. You move yeah, on. you build it around. You them. Build, yeah, correct. So like we had we, Vidane Oliver, who's a goal scorer, but but you're built Andy around Cook Andy Cook. Was, Everything right. you do, and a bit, we're a bit like that with Jono. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I always think to myself, I wonder what a front line would have looked like with Efron in the middle, Ricky to the left, and Paku to the right. Yeah, would it have been different? Would it have been a lot more dynamic? Would it have been, you know, we, we've got the goat in League One who scores goals for fucking fun. Do you know what I mean? Whatever else, but what would it look like with pace? Just pace yeah. without physicality yeah we are having that to aim at right where you have to play on the ground and you have to play a certain way because not having a big target man it could go against you as well but you end up with experienced defenders like Sheffield Wednesday who yeah. just take those young players out or do mm -hmm. whatever so it's one of them it's styles you know what I mean so what do you need to do to go one step more next year does 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 the ownership need to have a word with Mark Hughes and say look your style of play mm -hmm. you've done this great you've done whatever else but you need to let the foot off the gas here I think that I, I don't think there's still a doubt that you, we have a lot of confidence mm -hmm. in Mark Hughes as a manager. Okay, um, but I do think that we. Well, need to you, be a you say you've got confidence, focus. but you just call him boring. Well, <laughs> no matter our words. No, I mean it's a good point. You know, I I wouldn't be looking to sack Mark Hughes. Okay, um, we've done enough of that merry-go-round. Yeah, 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 yeah. And um, you're back in the playoffs, and you know you've had a playoff campaign. It's improvement. Yep, but. I get frustrated when you see the Leighton Orients, the Steve Nidges of this world, you know, not just look for, let's try and do better than we did last year yeah. when we got in the playoffs and be happy with it. You've got to go for the title. Yeah. A club your size, always. Like, yeah. a club Sheffield Wednesday side in League One has to go for the yeah. title. Like, with all due respect. And that should be our expectation, yeah. that should be our aim again yeah. next year. Yeah, and people always call me mad when I say, oh, we want to win a title or whatever. And they're probably right, because Peterborough, our size, is no divine right. You know, and, that, and that's credit to Plymouth. We're a bigger club than us. But well, that's your players. mindset too, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, my mindset's just that way. You know, it's difficult. You know, when I have a manager saying, you got to, you know, I'm like, that's tough, but I'll, I'll try. I'll yeah. try and play along. I won't get excited. You know, I'll try and keep it there. But for a club like Bradford, yeah, I mean, I, you have to be like, we're winning the fucking title. That's Bradford. Yeah. You're going to be up against Wrexham. Shit, you're going to break your record at your ground when Wrexham come mm -hmm. and visit. You know what I mean? Like top of the table clash. You've got to be thinking that way. Yeah. You know, Notts County. Because guess what? And here's where I would be saying to Mark Hughes. Listen, Sparky, as an owner, I'll be saying, you're going to have clubs next year who are used to scoring 130 goals. Wrexham and Notts County are going to hit League 2 like a fucking hurricane. Yep. They're going to come into this league and they're going to smash fucking teams to pieces. It's and they will. Hard. It's going to be harder next year than yeah. it was this year. MK Dons have come down. There are some big clubs that have come yeah. down and they're going to smash some fucking teams. So if you think you're winning games 1-0 and 2-1 here and there and competing for the title, mm. you might want to change the mindset. Yeah. But Sparky might turn around and say, well, I need two more strikers yeah. because that one's gone and now I need to change what I'm looking to do. Mm -hmm. So he's going to need some support. It's going to be fascinating, that league. Yeah. I mean, I would just think from a formation perspective, we just, you know, it, Andy Cook has been the, mm -hmm. the... I think Andy Cook will end up signing and extending his contract now. We, I already was going to Steam, isn't he? Yeah. <laughs> no way. <Your> face. <laughs> he wouldn't go that far. <laughs> you know. King, I that would kill you, wouldn't it? <laughs> Mind you, Stevie Boyd, love a player like that. That's oh, yeah. his kind of signing. Mm -hmm. Shit. Yeah, I mean, if he if he went anywhere, I think he's a northern lad. He okay. would look to go And somewhere. he's older. Yeah. So, like, to suddenly move with your family. Yeah. Now, that doesn't mean he's not going to go Are somewhere. you confident he'll stay? I think both sides want it. Are you offering him? Because you didn't want him last summer. No, it was interesting, right? <laughs> I mean, last summer you thought, hmm, <coughs> he, he was overweight the year before. Yeah. It wasn't really happening for him. Yeah. He came back, he realised. I mean, he said himself, yeah. look, I realised that I needed to change yeah. some things about the way I um, the fans treated loved myself. I was listening to the game and he was like, yeah. he was loved by the fans. Yeah. yeah, I mean, who doesn't when you score 28 goals in a season for, I mean, we're not, you, you are used to of course. having golden boot winners. If I was a clever game. team out there, how old is Andy Cook? 31, maybe there you 32. Go. Clever team wanting to win promotion, go off from a three year deal. Mm -hmm. he's That's not how you get keep him. He's not going to get that from a lot of clubs. If yeah. you want to get a player like that, you go off from three years. Yeah because he's likely to get a year, two years where yeah. he is. He's likely to get a year, two years and more money. Mm -hmm. But you go in and be clever and offer a three year deal. Because it doesn't matter what happens in year three. Because right. in the next two years, if he wins your promotion, someone will take yeah. him on loan year in year three. three. It doesn't yeah. matter, but some clubs won't take that risk. I'd fucking do it. Yeah. I'd be like, listen, yeah. by the way, Peter, we're not signing Andy Cook. But I I'm just saying, if I was a club out there, right. I'd be like, 
give him a three-year deal. You don't worry about deal. that third-year that you gave him. Nope, because... nope. And that's how you turn his head. Mm-hmm. That's how you get it done. So hopefully no one's listening here that wants to sign him. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. That's going to be nice. Any, any, any young players I should be sniffing around Bradford this summer? Um, Your goalie? <laughs> I mean, you don't need me to tell you that he's had a big yeah, impact. He's had a great season. Um, you know, I, I thought think, he was poor in the playoff semi-final. Yeah, I Maybe mean, age. I think that what is what teams have figured out is his weakness. You know, his weakness is controlling his six-yard box, mm-hmm. and so that's he's more dominant. Uh-huh. Typical young keeper. Yeah, so that's what he needs to work yeah. on in the summer. Yeah, we've um, got one like that. You know what I mean? So we won't come in for. What about your centre half? Centre half. Um, yeah, I mean we've got uh, Sam Stubbs who's done well. He's been a rock when he's come back. Good in. size. Injury prone. Is injury prone. Uh, so we'll see how that goes. I like the way you threw that in there. You know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, I mean I know you would you wouldn't sign him because you'd look, take one look at his injury record. <laughs> Oh, and say, I've seen it. Yeah. Um, I think I can fix that. You know, I, <laughs> I think we're surprised at how he, he made it through the season. Um, sure. We have Matty Platt, been in and out. Mm-hmm. Uh, Romney Critchlow, who was Huddersfield, but he got let go by Huddersfield. Yeah. Now I would look at signing him. Yeah. Um, he's. Why aren't you signing him? I don't know if we. I don't think we're not signing him. Um, I think that with him being freed by Huddersfield, maybe he'll go to League One. Sure. Um, I think that he's probably too good for League Two. Okay. Um, but we'll see. What's his weakness? His weakness, <coughs> um, I don't know, marking. You know, kind of positional marking. Really, like he gets the ball, he's great with his feet, great on the ground, can run the ball out. But that's, I mean, that's one of our challenges this year. We played very zonal at set pieces, and that's where we've fallen apart. I mean, it's you talked about Harry Lewis and the positioning for Carlisle's third goal. Um, I mean, it's like we put three centre halves on. over here. And There's the a big. Goal. It's like nobody even saw that yeah. his eyes were on the striker. I didn't nearly see the guy heading it in. No, me neither. What I thought the ball went straight through and yeah. bounced in. It's like where did that was, come from? Because he was expecting it to come here. Yeah. The goalie, he's gone across this, the whole goal. It's come from nowhere. Yeah. Is this, Fuck you know. I think everyone was a bit like, did, did that just happen? Yeah. Like yeah, no, hundred percent. Jesus. And then in midfield, I think that's been our weakness. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, you have Richie Smallwood who mm-hmm. has come into the season. He's got better as he's gone on. I think maybe after he had his kid, you know, he could refocus. Yeah. And um, but we need some, some. I don't know what if guile is the right word. Adam Clayton, box the box next to him. Yeah, because Adam Clayton came in and get, brought that experience. Uh, but he's there's no. Yeah, you can't pace. two of them in there over the yeah. age of thirty four. You know. Yeah. One of them needs to go box the box. Mm-hmm. So that's what we're definitely missing. Um, Jamie Walker, who played as a 10, he had a pretty disappointing season, to be honest with you. He's never fully fit for a year. Yeah. I said that, didn't I, at the mm-hmm. start? Wonderful. I mean, you had him back in the day, didn't Talented you? Talented player. You never get 40 games a year out of yeah. him at the moment. Well, you know. And when age. he came back, he just didn't uh, he didn't influence enough games. Mm-hmm. So there was no. Real shame. He's real talent. Mm-hmm. I liked him when he was with us. It was just one of them where you looked at the numbers, it's like, never play more than X amount of games per yeah. year. Some players are just like cursed with that. Yeah. Don't know what it is, you know? So, so you've got a bit of a busy summer then. Yeah, and there was a lot of lone players that didn't work. Mm. So, you know, as much as we had um, Scott Banks and Palace, um, who did well, and we had Romney Critchlow at the back who did well on loan, mm-hmm. the rest of the lone players didn't really work. You had one nick by Plymouth, didn't you? Yeah, Tyree Wright, mm. uh, who was all set to sign basically for a pound. Um, but we let that one through our fingers. We went to Plymouth, and it seems like Plymouth didn't really, the fans didn't really rate him. So maybe he's going to be back in the market. We'll see. Yeah. Uh, but that left side, we were really exposed. Yeah. And everyone, Mason Clark would have done quite well for you. Yeah. <laughs> only, if, Too late. If only, we're millions now. <laughs> if only we had the beans to, uh, yeah, to come and, and pay a transfer fee. Uh, we sure. missed that boat. The old hindsight's wonderful, isn't it? Mm-hmm. <laughs> but that's what I think a, a lot of fans don't necessarily see is that. The talents from the National League are going to oh. get bought for money that League Two teams can't afford to pay. Oh, yeah, no, I, I look, I, I've got my eye on a couple of them right. as well, you know, younger. And, you know, people always go, non league, non league, non league. If you look at like when we beat Wednesday 4 0, Jack Taylor, mm-hmm. million pounds out of non league, yeah. ran the fucking show. You start looking. And who else would pay a million pounds? Ronnie Edwards came from non league. Yeah. Uh, um, Efron Mason Clark, non league. You see some of the talent that we have sprinkled around our mm-hmm. team. Where did they come from? Humble beginnings. So, don't ever judge that place as some fucking like you know whatever. Yes, granted, in the champ, it's tougher bringing them up to that level. But League Two, League One, yeah. 
you can make it happen yeah. if you get the right ones you know what I mean and there have been we've signed failures from that level yeah. as well do you know what I mean but there's a lot of technically good players at that level but you have to spend mm-hmm. you have to put your hand in your pocket why do they find themselves at that level I think some of them go out through academies I think they get released they fall down Jack Taylor was at Chelsea he got released uh, Barnett picked him up in League 2 he went down um, Efron Mason Clark I can't remember his history but again, you know, they end up, you know, some of the clubs are in London areas to mm-hmm. pick up some talent, you know what I mean? So I just, it, it happens. People fall down the ladder. I think when you're 19, 20, 21, you haven't made it in the world. I think shit happens. You know, it's, it's like that in real life as well. Yeah. So so what else you got regards Bar- uh, Bradford? Mm, I think that's it. You know, that's just, it. I was not angry. Heartbreaking. Yeah, I was not angry. I was just frustrated because I feel like if we'd have been, if I'd have felt we'd have been unlucky, yeah. then I would have been thinking it was a chance missed. And really, when we all, the reality is, we all looked around and said, we can't, well, coming up to the last week of the season, we can't believe we still have a chance of automatic promotion with yeah. the way we've played this season. Yeah. Maybe that shows about the lack of strength in the league. But it'll be different but next year. And it will. I don't think you're going to have, you know, the size of the clubs in there, whatever mm-hmm. else. I think if you're not with the pack, that top three could separate itself by March. Yeah. You know, in a big way. Yeah, I just so. hope that we've learned enough, that Mark's learned enough of being in League Two. I think he will. Fix. Look, he's not a mug. You know, he's a very experienced manager. I think also, sometimes you have a go with a man. You don't know what ingredients they've been offered. You don't no. know, you know, what they're. I mean, we're still a self-funded model. Yeah. You know, people throw out all these players, and um, you know, again, why didn't you go and sign uh, Efron? Yeah, of course. Like, we just don't have the money to do. Of course. To, to do that. Yeah. No, I get that. And I'm, I'm only taking a mick. But yeah. no, you're absolutely correct. I saw your owner was at the game. Yeah, he was. He was on the TV. Yeah, yeah. I was watching. I was in England or whatever. And I was like, he was kind of bedded into the background mm-hmm. and I'm in on the game. So at least he didn't get any hassle. So that's one positive, you know, with everyone yeah. kind of people are ignoring all that yeah. side of things, you know. So look, we can only try again. You know, this is the game. This is why it's cruel. We're both massive football fans. Both our teams failed in the playoffs, but they succeeded to get in the playoffs. Yeah, I mean, I think of that and last week of the season, you know, that's magic. And we that's both would have taken it. Let's. Let's get there's a storm outside. Yep. Um, that's why we love the game. And, you know, it's um, the ultimate dream is both our clubs in the championship. Yeah. You know, that's the ultimate dream, you know? So let's see if that can happen. It will put a spell out there in a good way. That's what we need the next three it years. It will happen. It's next just three years. When? When? I know, that's, yeah, the, that, that's the million that's dollar when, question. You know? So we've got a lot going on. Obviously, um, people are asking, are we coming back? Are you okay coming yep. back next year? I think what we need to do, I think we need to, and I'll say this now, and I'm lazy for it, we definitely need to tailor more people to come on the show, yeah. more interviews. I think we need more fans on the show, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? And whatever, angry or not angry. I think we need to like pick a couple of fans, you know what I mean? Like each time, and you know, might have like a five minute fan segment mm-hmm. who wants to moan about a fucking game at the weekend or whatever. So I think we need to change that style of it. But for everyone out there, you know, we, we, we love doing what we do. Yeah. We don't want to quit doing the podcast, but. Obviously, we both have lives as well. Timing just const- it was funny, you know. I think co- coming towards the end of the season, it was we had a lot of travel going on. You had a lot of stuff you're dealing with, oh, yeah. and then all of a sudden, the superstitions kick in. Of um, well, we don't want to do one. We haven't podcasted for a couple of weeks, and we won both weeks. We don't want to get that in the way. It's exactly what I knew you'd be thinking as well. <laughs> uh, one thing I am going to do, I'm going to get rid of loads of my OCD and superstitions next year. They have to go. Yeah. My missus says I need therapy, and she's right. I gotta stop. No more walking out two 0 No. Think about everything you're missing yeah. when no, you walk no, no, out. No, no, no. I gotta stop. I'm, I'm that loads of things. I have to stop. Mm. So I am gonna make. A, it's probably gonna drive me to insanity, but I'm gonna make and a conscious Liz, effort. And yeah. around you. <laughs> but I'm, I'm gonna stop. So yeah, I am the quirkiest motherfucker ever to own a football club with those things. But like enough of that, you know. I think we have to try and have a bit of fun next year. I think we have to like smile a lot more. Yeah. A lot of this year has been like pulling teeth in so many ways. Probably for both of us, you know, mm. clubs wise. So I think. We want like a really a fun season. Yeah. How's you know? Baz doing? Yeah, Baz is great. You know, Baz is Baz. He's fucking magnificent. You know what I mean? Like fucking, I love him to bits. He's he's great. I spoke to him earlier before you came in. I was yeah. down there speaking to him, and you know him. He's meeting with agents, meeting with this, meeting with that. Fucking had that phone call, this phone call. Ronnie's gone off to the World Cup. He's mm-hmm. flown out and whatever. So, um, yeah, he's uh, he's going to be a very busy man the next six weeks, and uh, you know both ways. Yeah. So you know, in his element. Yeah, but you know what? I've also I've, 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 I I was meant to have done this back at the club. I promoted Liz. Liz has become head of football operations. Okay. I'm going to do a video with Phil and her because we don't give her. You know, Liz's been around a long time. She's football secretary, but she's an integral part of what yeah. me and Baz do on the football side of things. And I've given her a lot more responsibility. She's now dealing herself also with contracts, agents. Yeah. You know, not necessarily always needing me and Baz. 
Um, there's so much she deals with on the football side. She's just such an asset to the football club. She's like, brilliant. She's brilliant. Yeah. You, you know yourself. You know what I mean? She is a fucking star. And I've always said we have so many stars at our football f- club off the field. And as I get through all this crap I'm dealing with, I actually want to look after some of those stars for a change. So that's a big thing for me over the next kind of like six to nine months doing that. So yes, yeah, so Liz, congrats to you on getting your promotion. Well deserved. And uh, I'm excited because I think she can do what she wants in football, go very far. You know, she's got the right mentality, but she's one of many. We have a few at the club like that. You know, we have special shout outs to our CFO, Dawn, who's been through hell and back this season with the ups and downs and stuff. Um, to Phil, fucking phenomenal, legend. Uh, Joe, uh, Joe Dent, our photographer. Um, Chris with tickets. I mean, he's just fucking the stress he has to handle. And season tickets are up. Our gates yeah. were up this year, no matter what you want to say. Massive mention to Alex, who's the best, I mean the best in the business commercially. There's nobody who does what he does on a commercial level with Horace. It's only two of them. But our clubs who are bigger than us have seven in those departments. Mm-hmm. Um, and a special mention then to the people I've not mentioned and missed out. You know who you are, and you know, you're very much appreciated for the job you do at the club. You know, we have some, we have some magnificent people at our club. Yeah. When the club gets hammered and called bottle jobs and choke jobs and this, that, whatever else, that's where it kills me more because of those people they hurt they hurt they bleed blue so are, you know are you hiring a ceo is Leighton i, I, I am Leighton's the operations yeah. uh he's the coo yeah. and he stepped in and done an admirable job and you're right you know i apologize i didn't cover Leighton off there because he gets hammered in certain sections for some bizarre reason i'm toying with the idea and i've said this to jason that i i want to spend more time with the top tier management we have like five or six people mm-hmm. who run departments and I'm thinking of me and J- and someone else, possibly Jason, sharing a CEO's job for a period of time, you know, using those heads of departments. And I, I think we could do it really well. Yeah. You know, there's so much else going on at the club. CEO at our club isn't like at other clubs. They don't mm-hmm. do football stuff. Most CEOs, if you, as you know in football, yeah, they run the club. They run the club. They yeah. handle football contracts. They handle everything. We don't operate like that. Some people will say that's good. Some people will say that's bad. The way we operate, our CEO basically is not that person. Yeah. So you get lots of people applying all excited about football. Um, no, you've nothing to do with football, the training ground. You're running it. a business. Yeah, you're running a business. And yeah. to be fair, we have people brilliantly running yeah. parts of the business, commercial, tickets, you know, all those things anyway. So I just need, you know, me, Jason, spend a bit more time, you know, potentially Randy, you know, depending yeah. on how you know, it all goes in time, spending more time, you know, helping those people and giving them the growth and the responsibility to run the departments. So there's good things happening in that way. So I'm, I'm, it, it's not all doom and gloom. I said it before, there's been too much noise off the pitch. I will have less noise yeah. this season. You know, Exciting stuff football-wise, but less noise off the pitch. Yeah. So let's leave it there. Yeah. Uh, God bless to Posh and Bradford fans. You know, Thank you for staying with us. Email us on... Uh, contact at hardtruthfootball.com yeah uh, ideas for next uh, year yeah we'll be oh, back in the summer we're I back in the summer anyone who wants sponsorship there are packages available we do have an audience of I think it's like 12,000 people yeah. listen to us live every week or listen to us when we record so if you want to have your product placement on there we have uh, advertising available too so email on that contact at hardtruth.com and uh, thank you to H and everyone behind yeah. the scenes who helps us and our man uh, uh, Robster yeah. as well who does a lot of work behind the scenes for the podcast we love you all have a great summer, everyone. God bless. Yep, see you soon. Take care, everybody. Hey.